Hey, Franco Cavallari coming to you again from another workout. I um, did a post last time on eggs and I got amazing questions that I think created a platform for some more dialogue in that context. Two things, two things that were highlighted to me in the questions. One was more questions on the cholesterol subject matter, which is a bit of a paradox. I'm gonna leave that for the next post. But um, also <clears throat> with regards to mTOR signaling and anabolism. Okay, so I talked about biological value of protein. Let's move outside the scope of eggs for a minute. The higher biological value proteins, not plant-based proteins. I'm gonna go back and talk about that, but plant-based proteins have a lower biological value, okay? Meat, animal-based proteins are a bit higher. For example, beef is around 82. Fish, 81, 82. Chicken, 80. Whey protein exceeds 100. Eggs, whole eggs were kind of the standard where the biological value was measured against eggs being 100. Egg white, 90. Whole eggs, 100. Whey came along and they said, wow, performs better than egg. You can't use egg as a standard other than making whey higher. So whey protein is about 100 to 110, depending on the quality. And here's an interesting fact. The way your body uses protein to build muscle depends on how it's capable and able to activate the anabolic sensor. And the sensor is directly linked to mTOR, a signaling protein that takes the amino acids you consume in and then converts them into protein for muscle. Now, this sensor tends to decline in sensitivity as you get older. It's one of the reasons why, hey, I'm 59. I'm not putting on mass the way I used to when I was younger, but all I'm doing now is trying to maintain it. Two things help maintain it. One, exercise, stimulating that muscle mass so that it stimulates anabolism for recovery. But you have to have the amino acid profile in the protein to be able to restore that muscle quickly. As you get older, it's harder to do because it's desensitized. Now, I did a podcast in PotentialWithin.ca that speaks specifically to muscle mass and longevity and your ability to avoid mortality and morbidity when you get sick if you have good lean mass. But as you get older, the, um, the unfortunate thing is that mass starts to decline. It's called sarcopenia with age. You get loss of muscle mass. The way you maintain it is you eat high biological value protein. You must eat high BV protein. Whey protein exceeds 100. And the reason why whey is so great is the amino acid profile in a good quality whey is very similar to mother's milk's amino acid profile. And it has a high leucine content. Leucine resensitizes the anabolic sensor. Okay, leucine is an amino acid, it's a branch chain amino acid. You've heard of branch chain amino acids. Many of you take them before workout and after workout. And the branch chains are made up of, I just, I just did supersets a few minutes ago. So I'm just catching up, my, catching my breath here. So the branch chain amino acids are made up of valine, isoleucine, and leucine. Leucine is primarily understood to be something that supports insulin function, supports anabolism by making sure that, that anabolic sensors are active and, and, and sensitized to your intake of, of, of amino acids or protein. Here's something very important that people miss. Why, as you get older especially, do you need to make sure you have fast digesting protein? It's very important because when you activate that mTOR signaling pathway to build muscle, if one amino acid that's essential, even one, is limited or missing, your body can't use the protein to rebuild that muscle tissue. Listen, the amino acid sequence for muscle mass, for tendons, for hair, for skin, uh, your gums, they're different each have a specific amino acid profile. If one amino acid is missing during the construction of the fiber or the amino acid strand or the protein that your body's making to rebuild, if one's missing, all of them get discarded. This is why you need fast acting amino, uh, uh, a protein that enters real quickly all at once. That's why whey works so well. Problem is whey comes in and it's diminished immediately because it's used up. And then you need more protein in a couple hours but it doesn't matter. You take more protein in a couple hours or you use this fast acting before your workout and after your workout. I'm gonna tell you, I just, before my workout, half a protein drink, half a scoop. So it's about 15 to 20 grams of protein. And I put a teaspoon to a, a tablespoon in, in my pre, a teaspoon of 
olive oil. Oh my God, here come more calories. No, why? The research shows, and I talk about this on my podcast, irrefutably, the research shows that as that mTOR signaling mechanism becomes desensitized with age, adding olive oil resensitizes it. It's not understood why, but so do fish oils, but not as readily as olive oil, and it may be the polyphenols in the olive oil that support the mechanism. And then immediately after the workout, a full one and a half dose. So now it's 45 grams of protein. Same protein, fast acting. Now the pre, so this is called bracketing the, bracketing the workout to prevent full catabolism of your tissues while you're training because of the high branching amino acid content within that essential amino acid profile of the whey, right? Here you're starting the anabolic process while you're training. When you're training, the body wants to catabolize, break down tissue, but we're offsetting that, offsetting it with that half a scoop. And then after the workout, another teaspoon of oil with one and a half, one and a half servings to recover a fast acting protein. And then go on to your whole legs throughout the day as slow acting protein. One of the reasons why that whole egg, and I tell you, I've studied this intensely, even in our laboratory, to see how white, egg white, versus whole egg, or egg yolk, will stimulate mTOR signaling based on the amino acid profile. The amino acid profiles are actually quite similar. They're quite similar, and we get similar results in the lab. But in the biological system, right, in, in the in vivo uh, system, it's different, because you have insulin functioning um, at, at various levels to induce amino acid uh, in, uh, absorption by the cells so that it can be used. So we want to maintain insulin function. And that is also a major problem as we age. I'm 59. Even though I don't have type 2 diabetes, and many of you don't, there are pre-diabetic states of insulin resistance. Now, diabetes, type 2 diabetes, is ultimately a progressed state of insulin resistance. But we all develop various degrees of it, which create metabolic insufficiency as we age and it is not known for sure if mTOR signaling which is the anabolic portion is related directly to 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 signaling by insulin but mTOR signaling parallels insulin signaling as insulin declines so does mTOR decline so you want them both to be up and efficient so that you can maintain muscle when you're older and for the guy who asked the question of yeah i got a bit of a gut you're right i'm up to about 200 pounds i'm on a bulking phase but i always maintain the six pack. <laughs> Take care.